Right. Good. Uh, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Low Code Cafe number ninety three uh, for May eighteenth, twenty twenty two. Uh, I am Dale Warner, head of support for Plant an App. Today we're going to build an app in under an hour. That's a, a pretty aggressive goal, but I think we can get most of it done. Um, and I, I think um, we're going to use some techniques maybe that uh, we haven't demonstrated in, uh, in recent episodes. So it may be some uh, new, new content or just in general, the, the ability to, uh, to show how you can get a lot done with low code in a hurry. So uh, we'll be doing a luggage tag app, and um, we'll also be talking about some other things. Uh, first, let's take a look. We do this, this uh, event is an event we do every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Central Time, and we tend to focus on uh, tech, some, some form of technical topic every week. Um, the episodes are recorded and placed on our YouTube channel, so uh, youtube.com slash Clinton app. And if you uh, subscribe and do the alerts, you'll see when we post new episodes. Today, it's um, all me, although uh, I'm going to ask Patrick to jump in and help me some. Uh, but we're gonna, we'll do a From the Trenches segment, talk about some things we're seeing on the support channel, and then we'll get right into low-code development. Uh, there are multiple ways to engage. So if you want to either do a question or put something in the chat, raise your hand, we would uh, welcome the questions. Um, we do not have a roadmap update today, so I'm going to skip past that part and uh, go right to from the trenches. Um, we are in a regular pattern of releasing hotfixes. Previous to uh, today on version 1.20, that's the current release, we've released 16 hotfixes. Today, there are four more, and so those are out in your uh, hotfixes in the configuration updates tab. Um, we had a, a bug where uh, you're trying to duplicate a workflow, and sometimes that would fail, and so that's fixed. Um, someone reported in our new um, Bootstrap 5 uh, on the uh, tab builder, tabs module that uh, if you're trying to do a certain CSS class, you were not getting it. Uh, it wasn't adding the class. So uh, we're doing that now. Uh, in form builder, uh, the JavaScript field assignment to a drop down field wasn't working. I don't know about that one, but it's fixed. And then um, per item actions or final actions are now hitting when enable selection. So when you're doing a listing and you're doing, um, uh, when you're enabling that you can select something, um, you're only, the only, there's, uh, instead of having three sections, the uh, section for, um, before for each item and after, if you're doing just a single item button, uh, those those extra areas are hidden, so uh, to to avoid any confusion about what's going on with those. Okay, uh, one of the things, uh, just a technical topic, uh, one of the things that we learned or, or noted this week, some some clients were having trouble with is the differences in the C sharp and the JavaScript syntax. And so let me take you out and uh, take a look at at that. Just, I'm not going to go into it in depth today, but just kind of to point it out, if you're looking at fields, and it doesn't matter which one, but we'll take a look. Uh, many of our um, items like uh, configurations like show conditionally or enable conditionally, um, they, they tell you exactly what syntax it supports. And so, for example, it's saying a, a C sharp syntax uh, for these. Um, those tend to be back-end things, correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but they're, they tend to be uh, back-end things versus you might have bind expressions and uh, these are in JavaScript syntax. They're very, very similar, but there are subtle differences and those uh, differences can cause confusion. The one that Patrick brought uh, to me is that um, C Sharp, um, supports, for example, the ability to see if a string contains or has, uh, find the index of a character or string inside of a string. The JavaScript uh, syntax is slightly different, 
It has, for example, uh, the ability to have an includes or also index of, but it's slightly different uh, case. It's case sensitive and it's um, the small i for index of. So um, just wanted to point out those differences and make sure you're using the right syntax for those things. Uh, and I'd, I'd add, Dale, that um, you know the, the the case where this seems to happen most often is taking that it, you know when you do a bind expression a show for a show bind expression, um, if you have the field required, often you need to um, put a uh, a condition on the validation for the for the field as well, so that the required is not happening. And um, if you simply copy the um, show bind expression and paste it into the condition in a lot of cases it'll work like if it's just um the example there some field equals some value that you know a copy and paste of that would work but um it, there are cases where the syntax is slightly different and uh, pasting that into the condition field would cause a uh, an, an error on your, in your form and it can be hard it can be kind of hard to troubleshoot so right. yep. so so paying attention to which syntax is there, and then if you're using anything more complex, and especially these index of contains includes, uh, that those things are going to need some additional thought. Uh, we're looking into whether we can validate these uh, on any level to try to, to make it easier for you to avoid an error, but when it comes up, that can be a problem. Okay. Um, so with that, Let's see what else we have here. That was differences. Um, an announcement, low code cafe, there is not, uh, we're not going to have a low code cafe next week. So the next episode will be on June 1st. Um, an encouragement, uh, we have another meeting on Fridays, the same hour, it's the campfire meeting. It's more of a uh, meeting format instead of a webinar format. So it's a very good opportunity for, the, for you to engage with, uh, with us and with the community. And oftentimes you can uh, either learn something about uh, plant and app that you didn't know, or perhaps bring a problem and get a solution to it. Um, I see that we're that we might be having volume problems. Uh, Patrick, can you hear me okay? I can hear you good. Yes. Okay, so maybe it's just uh, individual internet issues, but um, yeah, do bring it up if I'm I'll try and speak louder or talk into the mic. Um, I'm going to post some links for this episode. These are. Uh, on the chat and just to uh, encourage you to register for the local campfire that I was just talking about or uh, to get to our webinar recordings, the community portal uh, and our webinar feedback form. We, we read every one of those feedbacks to, uh, to try and make this event better. So with that, I'm gonna jump into uh, hands-on low coding, building an app in the computer. I uh, want to do a little bit of setup first. We have a new plant and app app established, but I, we're going to do PayPal today and I don't have that installed. So I just wanted to walk through that. So here's our app. I'm going to go into updates, add-ons, and get the PayPal integration installed. So there's nothing uh, too difficult about that. We click install and let it go. It's going to take a minute to do and that'll uh, hopefully that'll be done when I finish introducing the app that we're going to do. <clears throat> so the app, our goal, of course, is to build an app in under an hour. It's something that makes sense. Uh, the overview of what this app does is the, we're going to give users the ability to place an order and pay for it on PayPal. It's going to automatically build our, our luggage tag information so that uh, uh, we can accomplish our, our goal. The, uh, the goal is that um, the luggage tags that we're going to produce are going to look, look something like this, uh, where they have a, and I guess I could put it right side up, uh, um, a scan for information, and it's going to have a QR code. So um, somebody can scan that QR code and get full information about how to um, uh, get the bag back in touch with the owner. And it's going to allow users to interactively change that information so they can put as much information as they want on that uh, as a result of that scan. So that's, that's where we're going. And if we have time, we'll also do uh, 
in addition to getting the order and building what we need, we can also let people know uh, if, if it's fictional company that there are new orders and that they need to be processed. So I, I think we'll have plenty to fill the hour. So going back to our setup, we have this new Plantin app. We now have our integration installed. I've also set this up so that the default theme is page builder with Bootstrap 5. We're going to do all of our work in Bootstrap 5. And um, we're going to have, uh, we need to have a PayPal sandbox account. Now, I already have the account uh, and it's set up here, a test account. So you should, if you don't have one, getting a, a sim, uh, you should look for uh, the Google sandbox test. Uh, and uh, PayPal sandbox test, and you should be able to find how to create one of these. But this is what it looks like on the inside, and so we'll actually uh, create the records that we need when we get to the PayPal part of this. And yes, this is finished installing, so that's good. And so now we can see, for example, that we have the PayPal integration installed on our list of uh, what's installed. Good. So that's the setup that's been done, and so now let's uh, get started. So the first thing we're going to do uh, in support of users, they're going to place an order on one page and pay for it on PayPal. It's a very simple uh, scenario. We're only selling luggage tags, so we don't have to worry about items or uh, having a separate items table. We're just going to have an order and we're going to charge for it. And in the process for this, we're going to automatically build the tags data. But in order to do all this, we got to have data, a place for um, our entities. And so we'll be building uh, these entities, the order status, the order, and the tags. And, uh, but first I'm gonna start by creating a setup page for maintenance forms. So if you're, um, we can take a look at our site as it comes today. Uh, we just have a home and a configuration page and the configuration page would not be visible to anyone who uh, is not logged in. So we're gonna create a setup page, which will also not be visible to people logged in, put all our entities uh, in under there. So we go to pages and right at the root level, um, we're going to create a page. And so that's on the site root, it's gonna be called setup. We're only gonna make it available to view for ourselves. So low code engineers and admins get to see this and in the same way citizen uh, admins and low code engineers. And so this will create our page. Now that we have our page, we can put our entity, um, uh, the um, information that's automatically built, the maintenance screens for these, uh, the forms and listings will go under that setup. So we'll start with order status and all we need for order status is just the name of the status. Entities, and um, I'm going to create a namespace. So we're going to add a namespace called orders. So everything that has to do with orders, we're going to put them in, in one spot. So um, hmm. do that, right? The yeah, the namespace is going to be called orders. Put that in the description. Um, so we're going to save that change and then um, I worked myself into a, a corner here. So close this and refresh. Orders, there it is. So we're going to select that as a namespace. And the thing that we're going to create is order. And it will be a bootstrap five. We're going to display that in the menu and it's going to be under our setup page. So we'll put it there and all we need is a name property. So we'll add it and make it be the uh, display name. And um, sure, we can make that sortable. From a permission standpoint, we don't need any special permissions in this users. We're not going to have users in our system. Um, the people are gonna, uh, when, when people interact with our site, they're not gonna have to log in or, or create an account or anything like that. They're just gonna place an order. So we'll save that. 
and refresh our front end and take a look. So now we have a setup menu and uh, we have order statuses and um, we'll, we'll uh, let's uh, tell you what, as long as we're here, I will skip ahead. Um, we're going to have some order status values and so I'm going to create them now. The first is and then we'll say production ready. Assuming these high-end luggage tags will get produced. Um, production complete. And finally, we'll have that it's mailed. And then we will say shipped. So these are, this is, these are the statuses that will get assigned to each order. It'll start out in new and work its way forward. So that's the first one down. We have order status done. The next we're going to do, um, and our order is going to be pretty simplified. We'll have a, a name, an email address, a phone number, and then uh, this password, which is going to be used to control access to being able to change the information when they scan the tag, um, they'll have a quantity, a price, a total, and then an order status. So we'll go ahead and, and build that as well. So that will be a new entity. Also in the orders namespace, and it's going to be called. And we'll also put this under the setup. We'll use these screens for maintenance, but these are not what the users are going to see. We're going to actually create a separate form for them. So our custom properties here are name, and this is a text field. That's correct. So we'll, and that's going to be our uh, display name as well, the hyperlink one. We'll have an email address called email, and we'll say we'll set that as an email field. Password and because these screens are protected and this is not really a very secure application, we're just going to leave password as a as a uh, text field and make it fully visible. No problem there. Quantity is going to be a integer number. They can only order whole numbers of tags. Price is going to be a money field, and then. Also going to be a money field. And then the last one, order status. And this is an entity field type of order status. So that's going to let us put an order status on everyone. Um, I am going to make a lot of these searchable. We'll be able to filter some, maybe we'll filter by quantity or price or uh, status. And most things will be sortable. So these will control our maintenance screens. And then finally, again, on our permissions, we're not going to give any permissions to this uh, external permissions. All this is going to be handled by our administrators. When we need to write something to this, we'll just have to remember that we need uh, to, to uh, give the user the right level of permission to be able to write to this. So that's our order, and we'll save it. And then the last one we need is, our, is the information for our tag. So we'll do that. And this will be a new namespace. It's going to be called tags. And so we will select this namespace. And the name of this thing that we're going to do is a tag or tags. Um, 
Let me just go to the setup menu. And the properties we're going to have here are, uh, we're going to have an order, uh, what order it's connected with. The tag key, this is going to be an, an eight character random number we'll generate. Um, the information that's gonna get displayed and the password, we're gonna copy the password in here so that um, we can have control on at the individual tag level. Okay. So the first one then is order. This is a, uh, oops, get to our order. The tag key is just going to be a text field that we'll create. And this is the one that we're going um, to make as our display name. The next one is info, and we're going to make this a large text so they can put a lot of information into it. And the last one is password. Again, we're not going to be displaying this to end users, so we're just going to leave it as a text field. Um, we'll be able to filter these by order. Um, we can be, we can search for the information if we want to. Uh, why not be able to sort them? Okay. And um, for this one, the all users will make it easier on ourselves. Uh, users will be able to view this information without any extra permissions um, because the idea is that it's going to be publicly scannable. Okay, so we've got ourselves uh, our three entities and we'll move on to the next step. So the first, uh, we, uh, we created, um, we already created our data. Um, we created these different order statuses. We created the, um, we don't need any order data or tag data because that's going to be created automatically by the forms we're going to build. So we're set up with data. Um, next step is that we're going to build some pages and some forms. So. We're going to build a, the ability to place an order. It's going to be a one-page order form. Um, we're also going to need a place to go when the payment is received. We'll um, display that as a uh, your order number is kind of a page. And then um, on payment failure, we're just going to come back to the order automatically and, and uh, let them reload it. So um, that's, that's where we're going. So let's start with some pages. Um, we will go to the page, uh, pages, and we'll make a new root page. It's going to be called Buy Now. Want the money. All users are going to be able to see this page, but um, for editing it, it's going to be limited to admins and low code engineers. So that gets us our Buy Now page. And uh, I'm going to drill down into that page and add another page. This is going to be our uh, thank you for your order, the successful page. So um, thank you page. And this is going to be viewable for all users. Um, and the same way for editing, we can edit this page. But the other thing we're going to say is this doesn't need to be visible in the menu. They're never going to be able to navigate here all by themselves in the menu. We're going to send them here if they have a successful payment. So if we go back to our front end and take a look, we now have a buy now page and we can go there. It's an empty page. We can't see the success page. So we've gotten through uh, building our, um, our pages and now it's time to build our order. The order is going to match very closely to our entities. And I'm actually going to turn on, I showed this uh, recently in another webinar, in our general settings, I'm going to turn on the SQL console. And this is kind of handy to be able to see our field names. So I'm going to go to SQL console and take a look at um, our order pages, our, our order fields, because these are the fields that we're going to need to create 
in, uh, to, to accept in our order. Um, so the order is going to go on our buy now page. We'll create a form, an order form. So uh, DNN puts this empty HTML tag that I don't need, so I'm going to delete it. And we are going to add an action form and manage it. Oop, drop it on the form here and manage it. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time making this pretty. You, you can see, I'm sure you have experience in making these pretty and or watch some of our other videos. I'm just going to put the fields out here. So, um, I'm just going to start with our settings. It came in as a bootstrap five. We're going to have the labels uh, uh, alignment on the right. Um, we're just going to accept these defaults and start building things. So we will add a uh, text field. It's going to be a text box and it's going to be called, uh, I'm just going to call it full name on the uh, label, but internally we'll call the field name. Um, this is, um, I'm not going to worry about making things required at this point and perhaps come back and do that. The next one we want to do is an email field. Uh, or is some email. And that name I'm matching these names to the database, by the way. It just makes life easier to keep up with and not have different names. So we have an email field. Um, the next one is going to be a phone number. And um, we call that phone number and it matches uh, our database. Um, I'm gonna, for the user, I'm gonna, use a password field, which will make this, when the password is typed, it'll be stars. So somebody looking over his uh, shoulder will not be able to see the password that they established for their order. So that'll be the password. Um, we also need a, uh, number. number field, this is going to be the quantity. Let's see what our choices are. We don't have, we're not going to let them order more than nine. That's not ideal, but it's the quantity. Um, the next is, uh, we'll start talking about money. So uh, actually, um, I'm going to just do these as text fields because of a uh, a recent bug I found with currency field. So we'll do them as text. It doesn't matter because these are going to be disabled. So we will, um, they're not going to be enabled. And so this one, first one is going to be called price. And we're going to default the price to $10. We'll sell these very reasonable price, $10 and no shipping. And then um, I'm going to clone this field because the, um, the order to go here. This is also going to be false and it will not have an initial value, but we are going to use the bind expressions uh, value to compute it. So this is going to be quantity price. Price and um, that's, I think that's all our fields. I'm going to save this work so far so we don't lose our place and take a look at the form. So we have a full name, email, phone number. This is a US centric application, so I'm going to change phone number a little bit. Uh, we'll test out 
quantity. If we put five of these, it's automatically computing the order total, 50, so that's good. Um, so I think the only thing I want to clean up is the phone number. I am going to open that in a new tab so I can quickly go back and forth. So if we look at phone number, we can just say that the initial country is US. And refresh. Good. And it has a default value that's showing there. I have a form filler, so I'm going to click that. And so I have my information comes in automatically. That'll help us speed along. Um, password, and number, and we can, all we need now is an order now button. So the form itself is pretty good, is in pretty good shape. Let's keep moving forward on it. This is going to be our order form. I love to name things. It's our order form. Um, we need a button that says PayPal button. And in a minute, we'll come down here and in our actions, we'll add the ability to go out to PayPal. Uh, but to start with, um, I want to build in support, auto, uh, build in support for um, keeping this form data around in the case that um, they get returned, the payment gets rejected, or they cancel out. We want to keep the information around. So there is a, a set of of handlers, uh, actions, and one of them is save state. They're, they're all state actions. So this is going to save the state of the form. And you just have to give it a key. And I'm going to call this order key. It doesn't matter. You have to give it something specific to you. And, and that's going to um, tell it. So we'll be able to restore order key if we want to. And I'm going to store these in the server session. So um, when they click this button, so far, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to save the state. However, in our um, events, I'm also going to add a, an item here, a state item that's going to be load state. And we're going to use the same key, and the same storage location. And uh, we're not saving any data in reports. We don't need to do that. And so uh, having done that, this form should now be pretty sticky. Um, if I fill in the form using my form filler and say test and five and pay by PayPal, it saved the state, it refreshed, and came back with all my values. So the save state saved all that information, plus it uh, restores it automatically. If I hadn't put that uh, event in to load the state, then it wouldn't come back. So while this order is in progress like this, and until they successfully pay, we'll leave it hanging around. When we get a successful order, we'll clear the state so that they, if they want to order more tags, which you know they're great tags, everybody should order more, um, that they'll be able to start a new order. So we've got the, the form acting, we're collecting information, we're um, dealing with the eventualities of whether or not they uh, get returned here. So we're good to go there. So back to our form, we and our pay by PayPal, it's time to start collecting money. And so uh, we'll do the PayPal. And there's an action called PayPal Express Checkout. And, and by the way, the, the first thing that we did where we installed the uh, PayPal integration, these actions, the PayPal actions, wouldn't exist until you install that. So if you get to this point and you haven't, uh, um, you can't find the PayPal actions, go back to the beginning and, and install the PayPal integration. So, We could put a, com a comment and we can see the some of the first things we're going to need is a username, a password, a signature. This is to tell PayPal 
uh, who, who to give the money to. So this is very important. So going back to our sandbox account, we're going to do this in the sandbox in the first place. This is a nice test area that PayPal gives us. We're going to create an account specifically to handle this. Um, the account we're going to do, we, we're going to create a business account that's going to uh, collect the money. And so we'll, I'm going to create a custom account because I want to give it some nice names. So the email address that's going to be connected with this is for um, This is a fake email address, doesn't affect anything. My password is going to be test, test. And name we give it. We're going to start out with a $0 PayPal balance, so we'll be able to see our money go up. Um, and that's it. We'll create this test account. And so now we see the tag store. Um, and I totally messed it up because it's managed to get it as a personal account. Somebody was probably hollering at the screen when I did that. Um, so let's, I'll do it again. It, it can't, the personal accounts are used to, to test payments, but we need to uh, actually have it be a, The other kind, the merchant account. So create custom account. When I did that, there's there's a checkbox here. So that's what I missed. It's a create account. So this is going to be still creating it with no money. Account. Maybe that'll be better. So now we have a business account and that's what we were after. This is pretty important because uh, when you view or edit the account, you get to see um, the information you're gonna need back on those screens I was talking about. So we see our, it's a store account and we have our passwords and whatever. We have our funding, it has a zero balance, but we have our API credentials. And so this gives us what we need. This is the username, password and copy these, going to paste them here in a second. And the signature, all these are what's required here. So the, we'll put them in the signature, the password, and the username from that other screen. Um, and we're not going to click go live. We're going to be in the, this will keep us with the PayPal um, sandbox account. So these are always the same description. It's going to be uh, luggage tags. Um, I'm not exactly certain where these come out, whether we'll see these, but we'll describe what we're doing. This is going to be in the US dollars, and the amount we want to do is the order total from our form, from our form field above. There's a whole lot of fields having to do with recurring, and so we're not going to do any of that. We'll skip past it. The ones we're looking for are what happens when things go right and what happens when things go wrong. So on success, we're going to want to do things at, at the start. Just first, very simple, we're going to send them to our thank you page. So we uh, find our thank you page here. And um, we'll enhance this a little bit as we go along. But if an error happens, we're going to, we want to bring them right back to where they came from. So we will redirect them to a portal page. And that is, uh, actually, I don't know if we need to do this. By default, they're going to come back to the same page, I think. So we don't need to do that. So let's see what happens. So the only thing, we, successful payment is going to take us to the thank you page. Great. So 
So let's try it out. I like to, to make steps and then move it forward. So we, um, we have our information filled in. It's remembered from before. We're going to say pay with PayPal. The experience is that it takes you over to the PayPal, in this case, Sandbox, and lets you log in or pay with your credit card or cancel and return. And I'm, that's the first one I'm going to test. What happens if I, if I get an error or if I cancel? So it takes me right back to my form. The form pre-fills with all of my information because of our state uh, logic. So we're good to go there. So we've, we, if we have an error, if we have cancel, they're going to be brought right back here and be able to try again. And so now I'm going to log in using a um, in my sandbox. I have a buyer at planetapp.com account that I've set up, and the password for this is also test test. So we'll try using that. So we test it using a personal account. We log in. Password. Uh, this is called Buyer Warner. We have a, we, we, this $50 is our thing, right? Um, the $50 is the payment that it's asking to do. We're going to pay that out of our PayPal balance. So we will continue. We could also add a credit or debit card. And so there's, uh, there's credit or debit cards that are available. So uh, from the from the testing site that we're already established, but we're just going to pay from our PayPal balance. And so now we've made it to our thank you page. So um, we've, we've done some, we've at least worked through the payment. Um, for fun, we can take a look at our tag store account and view it and see if we got some money. So if we look at the funding, we have our $50 minus the fees that PayPal took out. So uh, it's wired correctly. And if we were to look, if we were to have paid attention to the uh, buyer account in the same way, we could have watched their funding go down. So um, we have successfully made a payment. We just didn't do anything so, uh, to create our order. So that's what we're gonna go back and do now. So we'll go back to our buy now form. See, it's still held on to my information. So that's another thing we're going to want to clean up. So let's take care of that. In the PayPal um, safes, uh, PayPal Express, this is where we're going to learn whether or not we've succeeded. So the other on success kinds of things we're going to do, we can clean up that state thing. So we'll clear the state for the Order key. So we don't want to know we have the data anymore. And so we use the same settings we had before. Um, the other thing that we're going to want to do is to create an order record. So we'll do create, create new order. And I'm going to drag it up here and have that actually happen first. So the values from your form are available here on, once the success happens. So we can say that the name that's going to be in the order is going to be the same as our name field. And these are all going to be the same because we name them the same. Order status is going to be, we're going to pick a value. It's actually, it's the one value. Um, if we were to look at our setup and our statuses, we can see that ID one is associated with a new order. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say it's a new order or status one. Um, we could get a record ID out. Um, we don't need it. So uh, we'll just let it create it. So we um, order. 
we're clearing the state. And we're going to our thank you page. On our thank you page, ah, now here's where it gets fun. We should save the order number. So we'll save it in something called order number because when we redirect to the portal page, we can add a string that says order equals So we can give the order number on that page. Um, so a successful payment will come in with our order number connected to it. And um, I'm going to preference. I like to uncheck that one. So we'll save that. So now let's try our buying experience and see if things are working. So we go to buy now. Uh, this time we'll do three. It's $30. We'll pay by PayPal. Once we've logged in on PayPal, PayPal remembers us. So we don't have to do that again. Uh, we can pay it from our PayPal balance. So one click and we're done. And it bops us over to our thank you page. And notice that we have the order number of the form that's connected here. So we would be able to develop a form to put here to say thank you for your order. Order number is one. Uh, if we look as maintenance uh, folks, we can take a look here at um, our orders and see what's created. So we have the name, the email, phone number password, all the money, and it's a new status. So we've got a, a nice new order. Um, so we'll keep cleaning things up here a little bit. Um, let's see. One thing, actually, here's a nice experience. One thing that's good to test. If we were to go to buy now and do this in an incognito way, what you'd find is that we don't have the right uh, when we're processing that um, order, we don't we didn't give ourselves the rights to be able to write to that table. The users don't have that. So testing in incognito for something that has a you know a non-user or a different user, that's a valid that's a valuable thing to take care of. But I just know we're going to run into trouble with it. So in our PayPal Express, before we you know on success, before we uh, create this new order, we can use a load action. This is going to let us act as the super user. But I'm just going to put in a user identifier one, which I know is the super user. So now I'm going to have the rights to create this new order. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be able to write it. So uh, we'll save that. And now we can test out to see whether this works uh, as we had hoped. So we'll do uh, a password and we'll just use test. We'll order just one tag. And we're going to log in as this buyer. Since we don't have uh, all my pop ups coming up here. So we'll log in as this buyer. This is um, doo -doo -doo. Where is it? buyer at plantonapp.com. That's the test account we're using. Passwords test test. And we'll pay this from the PayPal balance. Hopefully, we'll get an order created and no errors. So we got to the thank you page. And note if we go now back to the buy now, ah, it didn't clear out our, we'll have to see what happened with that. It didn't clear out our, our uh, state. So that's enough. That'd be something to clean up and I'm not gonna take the time at the moment to do that, but it's just a clearing up the state doing that, right? Um, but if we were to take a look at our orders, we hopefully will have two orders now with good data. Yes, we do. All right, um, so the last thing I want to do is we'll, we'll work on creating the tags. And so now, now this is probably the typical thing that goes on with me. I can talk too long. So I, I, I'm not going to complete the whole thing in an hour, but at least we got the ordering portion done. 
So, uh, but we will create the tags and, and the tags uh, are kind of fun. We'll do that as a workflow. So the idea is for every order that we have, uh, we're gonna wanna create the number of tags that um, uh, were requested in that order. And we're going to do that. We're going to do a uh, use a repeat action. So this is related to tags. So I'll pick the tags namespace and we'll select it. The name of it is going to be says new order. On our actions, excuse me, on our input, we're going to have an order as an input. This is going to give us all our fields from an order. So this is because we choose that it's an entity order. And this is going to be required. When we process, we're gonna do a couple of things. The first thing is to uh, repeat. We're gonna do a repeat action and loop through all the number of tags that need to be created and create tag records. So, um, this is, uh, we don't really need a base token name. I don't know if it's required. We'll find out in a minute. But the rep number of repetitions we want to do is quantity, which comes to us through that input parameter. And we don't need uh, a while condition. We're just going to do one for every quantity that was there. And the action we're going to do is create a new tag. We'll fill in the blanks here. So the order that it's related to is the order. The tag key. Ah, we did, we're gonna we're gonna have to do a little. We're actually gonna use a uh, what might be considered a magic token, pre-prepared um, token that I'll just explain so that we can move along. Tag key is going to be this. GUID new compact gives us a nice long string that is random. And I'm using the string substring to pull out the first eight characters. So this is going to give us an eight character string that's random that will uniquely identify this tag and yet not be, I don't need it to be a full GUID. So I'll do that. The info is going to be off the order this tag. Involved or not as we need. This is going to be the same as the order password initially. And uh, we could save the output record, but we don't need it. And so we'll say save. And a little better documentation here. And and the last thing we'll do is um, we'll partially update the order to give it a new status. And so the order we're doing is order B and look at the status. And we're going to give it a value of two, which is going to be. If the order statuses, that is production ready status two. And that's all we need to do. So uh, we will have flagged it. We will end. And now we can save and test this on order number one. Uh, I needed that base token name. So we'll, we'll just give it something. Um, it just needs to be identified. So we're going to call it loop. finished and now we can see our result if we go to our orders we can see this one is now production ready because the tags have been created and if we go to our tags we can see that um, three tags have been created for this order and it had got the initial values but it also got these random keys so with our last couple of minutes i'm going to 
try to build the form that's going to display this uh, for this key, display this information. Uh, if there are questions, now would be a great time because if I don't get to them, I may or may not get this finished. But the idea here is that we're going to create a page now to do this. The page is, we're gonna, I'm going to keep it very short for the purposes of uh, QR, keeping the QR code uh, not complex. I'm going to call it T. It's not going to be visible. Um, it's going to be viewable by everyone and editable by the same cast of characters. And so we have a T page. And let's find it here in the list. It is, we'll go to it. So on this page, we'll put a, a form that will do the work of uh, displaying the information out of that tag. Again, I don't need this, so we'll get rid of it. We'll add an action form. Start out empty. And uh, on the way in, we are going to read, we'll do a SQL query to read the tag based on the tag key. So this is going to be select this as a parameter, target this token this way. So the tag key is going to be the get of uh, expecting a parameter called T and the value, the default value will be blank. So if T is passed into this page, it's going to, we'll do the lookup and it's going to put the information into now we'll be able to use tag to get information, to get whatever was recalled. So fields, we'll do a static text. This is not going to be fancy, but we're just going to say We'll just display the info. So uh, that's fast work. Let's see if it does indeed work. Uh, didn't pass a T value. So we look at our tags and we've got one here. That error would need to be cleaned up to make sure we don't actually error if they pass bad data. But we're going to, we're at our T page, T equals that. And it blows up. Stop starting. Sounds like the table name should be singular, maybe. Yes. I, I think you're right. So we'll go and manage that mistake in my SQL. I'll come at tag. And we could have learned that if we looked at the SQL um, console. So let's try again. And so we have our tag key, which comes from here, and this bag belongs to. So all the information off of our tag. If we had, um, so the next thing would be to generate the QR code where the QR code links and automatically brings this up. We could extend this to allow people to change their information dynamically. And that's the luxury key tag example. Um, and Ben was shouting at me, tag, not tags. You're right, you're right. Okay. Um, so with that, that is most of an application in an hour. And uh, hopefully you were exposed to some techniques perhaps that you hadn't used before. 
Uh, oh, yeah, you, I, nothing taken then. It's not shouting. It's fun. All right. Uh, in the absence of any other questions, um, thank you for attending this episode of Low Code Cafe. Um, remember, next week we are off, uh, but uh, Campfire will be as usual. Uh, thank you for joining, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>